Hello. It's Discoverage 12. Yes. It's called Vaulting Ambition. Yes, apparently. Presumably that's some reference to Lorca's ambitions. Yeah, though it's not pole vaulting. No. No, sorry. You weren't really expecting it to be about pole vaulting, were you? No. Good, (laughs) because that wasn't very likely. No, sorry. Previously on Star Trek Discovery. We've got some feedback from uh, the Pie Man from our last Discovery episode. The Wolf Inside. Hi guys, Purry here to talk about Discovery Episode 11. Um, can't remember the name of the title. Um, yeah, this one was pretty good. Um, I think, I'm oh, sorry, this feedback kind of recorded late, so it's been a five days and your podcast between it, but I thought I'd like to say a few things about it anyway. Um, yeah, so again, I'm quite enjoying this Mirror Universe arc. I think it's been uh, rather well presented. Um, and uh, it's good to see the idea that it's affecting them. Uh, so, you know, I mean, we have it, a lot of it's done through Burn, Burnham's point of view, and we have it through her eyes that she feels she's losing something because she's having to fit in here. Um, as I think uh, Lorca said in the last episode, like her life depended on it, this means conducting executions. Uh, it means, you know, sort of presumably beating up other crew members and being waited on hand and foot by not Saru, uh, which was a kind of weird. And indeed, I kind of liked. When they have the conversation um, between uh, Saru and Burnham, um, I like the idea that we're both hiding something. You know, she says she's not seen any Keldians, and he doesn't tell her about Dr. Dishy being dead. Um, so, yeah, I mean, basically the episode kind of meanders a little. I like the idea of um, her trying to preserve the resistance because they're becoming a proto-federation. And indeed, uh, it was the thing that set off Clem Fandango is the fact that uh, in another world, he'd be the one leading a unit... Yeah, sort of united group because uh, because the the sort of oppression of the federate well not the federation of the empire is uh, is making him have to seek alliances everywhere. We of course have Sarek with a beard. How could you not love that? Um, and uh, yeah, again, I just kind of guessed. So yeah, the revelation. What I was hoping for, which I've alluded to before, was that this was some form of brainwashing, but possibly with some sort of uh, personality transfer, um, or that it was literally just brainwashing. Um, but I'd had suspicions when you saw a lot of the surgery that um, basically, yeah, they'd made a clown fandango suit. Um, now, how much of that uh, we'll actually see, I don't know, or if there'll be more feedback. I imagine there will be, uh, or more feedback, more repercussions. Um, I also did guess that she'd stuck the data which the Discovery needed um, on the body. However, I was surprised that he was recovered alive. I did actually expect that we'd see him die in space, because Discovery's not been shy of killing people. And then uh, you'd see him beamed up, you know, sort of, you know, six weeks later, you know, you know, 24 hours later or something, you'd see the Discovery come and get him, and they'd have that data. But I suppose it's more interesting to have him alive. Um, and indeed, you know, uh, of course we have at the end, so she has spared them, and I thought she did quite well in kind of the sort of arrogance of sparing the, the compound. Um, but uh, yes, at the end we have all the woe. So, um, I was kind of hoping for the, the Empress to be Hoshi Sato, um, just for another Enterprise reference, but I was more than happy to see Michelle Yeoh appear. Um, that very much was a, a pretty hefty rug pull, and uh, indeed, uh, I was not expecting it. So, uh, yeah, we're left very much uh, wondering how they're going to get out of this one. Um, so, I'm sure I will find out... Uh, in a bit, well, if, if, where I'm recording in a couple of days. Um, but uh, yes, uh, we'll hopefully feed back at that point. Uh, but all it remains to say is do keep up the good work. Um, and I look forward to the next episode. So until then, bye for now. Bye, bye. Bye, see, bye. Thank you. Yeah, I was kind of surprised he was being across alive as well, really. And that he wasn't just spaced. Hmm. Yeah, well, maybe we're talking about sort of. Uh, Reveals and rug being pulled. <laughs> it goes it goes one one further with this one, doesn't it? Rather, but there we are. This feels like a reckoning. Your captain is dead. Emperor shows you up. She's a ghost. Haven't you ever been afraid of a ghost? Tyler is in distress. So be it. That is war. All hail the emperor. I think I'm gonna bow to you. I don't bow. <laughs> You always tried to outsmart me, Michael. Why were you lying to me? 
I'm still, it, we're literally just finishing watching it and I'm still processing this episode. It has to be said in the very, so I will do my best with the plot, but I couldn't quite keep up with the notes for the most part because particularly towards the end, things were coming thick and fast, weren't they? Yeah, they were, but it all made sense to me. So if you stop, I'll continue if I can. Mm hmm. So Michael is taking Lorca via shuttle to the Imperial Palace, which is a, a huge ship rather than a, a building. Yeah, but I, I like what it looks like, though. I, the design's OK, but it's not very well realised CG-wise. It's it's not very well defined at all. Uh, so it's it's the first sort of CG misstep, I think, of, of the series, which is a bit odd, but there we are. It's like they were being asked to do too much too quickly or something, I don't know. But yeah, it, it felt a bit sort of Babylon 5, to be honest, the level of detail on it. Hmm. And apparently interphasic space was how the Defiant crossed into the Mirror Universe. I really should have checked out those Enterprise episodes to find out if that ties into this, but I haven't had a chance. It's a much shorter teaser, but mm. there's quite the recap on this. But then it's not a surprise it was a much shorter teaser than last week's, blimey. Yeah. Uh, we learn that Mirror Stamets is also in a coma in the Mirror Universe, so they've kind of met in Comaverse, uh, Sporeverse, I don't really... This Not is really. all really losing me, it has to be said. Um, the Emperor stabs Lorca up a bit, which is a messy effect, isn't it? Yeah. But that's kind of a theme for this story, it has to be said. Clem Fandango is flipping out in sick bay, but regains the ash catchum side of himself for a while, and you begin to wonder what's, you know, yeah. whether there's still a bit of human. So it's not quite a human suit, because apparently there's still some ash catchum there. So, mm. Yeah, which I. I quite liked the mm. the the. I mean, we know it's gone wrong. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And I just I quite like the idea that it isn't perhaps as clear cut as you might otherwise. Yeah, think. it's it's not just that he's disguised himself in human form, but actually the human is not reasserting himself, but is there as well. Yeah. Yeah. Michael discovers that she's eating kelpian, which is very grim. Yeah. And it's very creepy music for the scene as well, which mm. is very good. The Emperor then sort of suddenly switches, because this is Mirror Universe and everybody's you know evil all the time, and suspects Michael of conspiring to kill her adoptive mum, i.e. herself, and sends her off to be executed. He, OK, right, fine, why bother giving her a meal? But there we are. Well, I think it was supposed to be to try and see what was really going on, because she's supposed to love Michael. So she, it was almost like she was giving one last chance, and then she says... I didn't always know when you were lying to me, but I can tell now. So, in other words, was there... Because you find out that whole, later that a whole load of stuff has been redacted. We already know it's been redacted from the, from the data, but there's other stuff that's kept secret, which kind of fits with the idea of an evil mirror universe anyway. So I think the idea is that she's got her there in case what was actually going on was for her ears only. So she's given her an opportunity to say something that might... And it just it's, it's not happened, it's not there. But, of course, we know it's not there because it's, it's not her Michael. Uh-huh. It, Stamets is sort of transferred from the sort of forest of spores to... Uh, he's, I mean, he's still there in his head or something, but he's the out surroundings now of the ship. And he sees Hugh and chases after him. Michael reveals her actual nature to the Emperor and, and offers her Giorgio's comm badge as proof. Mm. I love this when the Emperor gets the the ninja throwing stuff. Yeah, that's what I thought it looked like. So. <laughs> and just takes out like the whole, pretty much the entire court except for one. Yeah, dude who apparently it's okay for him to know, but yeah, everybody else gets kill, killed up. Yeah, when she realizes where Michael's come from, Saru goes to see the White Queen for answers about Clem Van Dango, and says, "Do you do you care enough about Volk to help him?" And she claims that no, she's not going to. Uh, do anything because he accepted the suffering which isn't quite what's borne out later on but there we are Stamets catches up with Hugh who confirms that he's dead <laughs> as you do Yeah, not quite how he's existing in this well uh... he says later the mycelial network binds everything together right. it's not It's uh, uh, my my thinking is it's not just alternate universes necessarily but it's also like time as well yeah well it does get very nexus later on mm. doesn't it which is never a good thing. No, yeah. but so I think that's kind of what it is that you're... Uh, so he's still in there at a certain period of time sort of thing. Yes, it's kind of like an imprint or a memory. Oh dear, I bet Lama's loving this. <laughs> <laughs> Michael asks for the Emperor's help to get them back, but she's uh, she rejects the Federation's values. Apparently Defiance crew went mad. Mad, sir, they're mad. Giorgio asks for the schematics of the spore drive. 
Saru beams Fandango into the White Queen's cell and she suddenly turns around and says that she can heal him. It's because he knows that she loves him and when faced with... or she, He's gambling on the fact that when faced with him... Right. In reality, in person, in his suffering, she will not be able to... Yeah, so she's OK as long as she's not looking at him. Yeah. Sort of thing. OK, all right. Then we get another mirror captain, uh, Messily Splats, one of Lorca's followers using something or other, I don't know, but, yeah, again, it's another grim effect. The White Queen operates on Glen Fandango... And, as I say, it's beginning to feel like the Nexus in stamps his head because he, he's hanging out with Hugh in their perfect time, so they're rewound a bit and they're brushing their teeth again. Yeah. And apparently the mirror stamps corrupted the Spore network and Hugh tells him to follow the music and then both Stamitzes are back. Right. Well, it's... Hugh isn't, in a way, isn't really Hugh. He's the network trying to communicate with Stamets to say... Is he? All right. To, to say, you know, the whole universe is going to go to pot because of what Mirror Stamets has done to the, the spores and mycelial network, unless you can get back. But I think because Stamets is Stamets, when the proper Stamets gets back, so does the other Stamets. Right. It looks like I, I chose the wrong day to give up drinking. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I think that's I think that's what is 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 going on that. Because the two Stamatses are obviously connected because they're both Stamats. When one of them finds the way back, the other one does. Right. And he's on some ship or other. Which... He's on the... Oh, the one... They, they, named, they did name check it, I think, in, when they very first appeared in the Mirror Universe. And they, they did give the name, but I can't remember what it is. But, you know, when they very first appeared in the Mirror Universe and they there was another ship? Right. Two or three, I think it's, it's that one, I think. All right. OK. That's, that's what he's on. Uh-huh. And then the f- final rug-pulling bit of business. Uh, apparently Lorca was effectively the father to Michael in this universe, and then it became rather unhealthily more. But that was just him presumably using her to get George- kill Giorgio or something. I don't, this is really where it all falls apart for me. Well, because it's revealed that humans in the mirror universe are sensitive to light. That for, doesn't make any sense. For reasons. It, it's the, it's yeah. a plot device, which, when you go back, it will all make sense if you were to rewatch. Well, from the except beginning. for any other mirror universe tricks. No, 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 I, I meant remember. if you were to rewatch discoveries. It, it's, yeah, yeah. Well, it's obviously, it device. makes sense for Lorca, but yeah, it's just like what? there's no logical reason why that would be. Yeah. But anyway. So I think, for whatever reason, Lorca decided he wanted power. And he felt that Burnham was his way yeah. to power. It didn't work out with Mirror, with Lorca and Mirror Burnham. Uh, uh, yeah, so, he's... so when he found out about the Spore Drive's capabilities, yeah. he's obviously gone across, uh-huh. presumably at the battle where all the crew... Supposed, died or whatever and he was still alive you know they said about him in the beginning that he was the only one left alive mm-hmm. in that big battle well, presumably the real Lorca's dead right died in that battle a mirror Lorca appears and claims to have survived it right and so he's been mirror Lorca all along hence Admiral Greg says you're different yeah and notices that he's he's different Hence the things with the eyes. Hence, he hasn't seemed to fit with the idea of a Star Trek captain because he's mm. not. He's an ISS yeah. captain. Right. And he was after Burnham because he knew that uh, because of the ties, because of his knowledge of the mycelial network, thanks to mirror standards, he knew that because of the ties, that that Michael uh, would be able to get him, him onto into, yeah. George's Giorgio's ship, and he basically I mean, wants to murder her and take over the empire. Right? Yeah, I, th- I think I got that, but it just seems an incredibly convoluted way of doing it, doesn't it? Wow, you've got to go to another parallel universe to steal the the version of somebody who's going to get you into the. Uh, and you know, he's he, uh, how did he know that they were going to get in the parallel universe with the discovery in the first place? Because he seemed quite surprised then, didn't he? I mean, how would uh, Well, but I presume that was acting that was a thing. Un- unless he somehow set it up for Stamets to go all wobbly. Well, that's what you wonder because right. that's when they're saying, you know, oh, we did these. What these what we need is happen- for him to explain all this with a big diagram. I suspect <laughs> there we are. But when you get, we might get that in the next Saru story. Saru saying that's a remarkable coincidence. Yeah, with all the spore drive 
you know, how many jumps and all the stuff, the stuff that's, that's happened. And he goes, yeah, no, it isn't. The, the idea, and then that's mm. like when he says, you know, have I done this to you? The answer is, yes, he has. So he has engineered things mm. to get where he wants. Right. Because he knows from the mirror stamets about the spore drive. Yeah. He knows from the mirror stamets what it can do. But the mirror stamets is destroying it all. As you might be able to tell, not enjoyed this story quite as much because it's just way too overcomplicated and convoluted for my liking. And it's like, okay, so we're pretty much every story now we've got to end with a massive rug pull and it, we're still not at the end of the season yet. Where are we going from here, for heaven's sake? It's weird. Well, presumably the answer to where we go, f- go from here is that there needs to be a way to get our crew back but without Lorca, who needs to stay in his own universe and be tried or whatever. Right. Yeah. Okay. And they have to fix the mycelial network because their spores are already... Yes, it's all sort of deteriorating, yeah. isn't it, now? Mm. There we go. Well, um, mm. so I say not key, but maybe it'll all get a bit better explained in the next story, so I might be pulled round again, but, yeah. Mm. See, I really like it because it explains why Lork has been the way he's been the whole time. Uh-huh. It explains his character completely, that he's an evil mirror dude mm-hmm. he's just shaved the goatee off <laughs> right so, okay. so that you wouldn't know uh-huh. and people did have suspicions about him I wish we should have asked I would have loved to know what the kids made the hell of, out of that because I mean that was as I say I struggled to f- pull the pieces together so yeah well I didn't struggle with who Lorca was and why that was and all the rest of it I think the eye stuff I get that it's a plot point and it works from that point of view but it doesn't work as yes because people in mirror universes have different eyes. What really? No, it doesn't. Yeah. It doesn't work in that sense. Yeah. But it does as a plot point. Similarly, yes, it works as a plot point that this is what Lorca's done, and he wants to become emperor, and presumably we go to any lengths to become emperor. But it's still, as you say, a really convoluted way yeah. of doing it. It's like they sort of came up with how they wanted the story to end, and then. They just they came up with this most ridiculous way of getting there. You know what I mean? It's sort of final destination, and what route you take to get there is just yeah, it's like Spaghetti Junction. Isn't it? Yeah. Well, so I think really my hope is I'm not expecting them to explain the eye thing. I'm not necessarily no, no, no. expecting them it's to bizarre. explain how Lorca did everything, but I want more of an explanation of of what's going on with the mycelial network and how it enabled it all to happen and what's been happening with the mycelial network in the mirror universe. That, to me, would be something that I would like to tie this together better. I'm not expecting to be tied up, it to be tied up completely because I don't think it can be. Aha. Uh-huh. Well, let's, um, let's find out if, uh, what other people think. Uh, we've heard from Daria. Hello. Hello, Daria. Well, Wow. Since Discovery has come back, it seems every episode has had my flatmate and me asking each other, did you see that coming? I didn't see that coming. (laughs) Lorca, the Gabriel Lorca we've been following all year, is from the Mirror Universe. And it fits. Unlike revelations about Julian over in Deep Space Nine, they've been dropping things in from the beginning. This is the first we've heard of the eye thing, granted. It fits with him never having the surgery that Admiral Cornell mentioned, though. He couldn't risk that the surgeons would notice something different about his eyes while they were in there. Mm-hmm. Speaking of Cornwall, when he attacked her while they were sleeping together, she and we thought it was because he was losing it. No, it's because he spent most of his life in a world where people really are trying to kill you as soon as your back is turned. That's why he had the gun under the pillow, you see? Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. No doubt the Prime Universe Lorca, in fact, didn't survive the destruction of Buran. That was what I was trying to remember, though, yeah? Uh-huh. And that's where the Mirror Lorca stepped in. That's what I presumed as well. Speaking of Mirror counterparts, I'm enjoying Emperor Georgiou, too. Despite the evil and the threat she obviously presents, there was a kind of maternal quality t- to her during her dinner with Burnham, even feeding her. Though there's another reason Michael will never be able to look Sarah in the yeah. eye when she gets back home. Though could she ever? He must have had something like half a metre on her. <laughs> You know, that's the second reference to a regular char- character being eaten on this series. Do they write this show when they're really hungry or something? Seems the answer for what they did to Vok and Tyler is whatever you can think of is worse than that. It's a far cry from the shows in the future where you can get nipped and tucked to look like an alien over your lunch break. <laughs> yes. <Yeah. laughs> Slightly different. This is a, yeah, a bit more full on than that, isn't it? <laughs> and is that... Is I think that at the end he's back to being Tyler and she's had to let Vox's soul in inverted commas go and that's why she cries. She lets out the war cry because what she's what she the only way oh, she's been right. able to save him 
is he's... by saving him as Ash catching Rob and as and Vok. effectively killing Vok. Ah, yeah, I got you know I completely forgot about that scene and and it made no sense. Again, it just felt like it was coming at me like way too fast. Well, like, like from what I could tell, she was removed. What they'd done, you see, is they grafted the brains together. If you see what I yeah. mean, and I think what she was doing is removing Vok's brain engrams yeah. so that. Tyler's will be left because mm-hmm. as he got better he started to speak human didn't he he said the same key trigger words that he was programmed with yeah a bit like whatever it was um, Winter Soldier yeah right but then he started saying them English not Klingon mm-hmm. and he seems to suddenly be at peace and she lets out the death cry right so I think he's Tyler again except you must bear in mind that the original Tyler was dead and he isn't really Tyler in a way so he's still going to be messed up and not quite right <sighs> I think. Uh, probably. <laughs> Carry on. Anyway, there have been a lot of review- reviewers borrowing the Oldsmobile slogan to say, this is not your father's Star Trek. Very true. But then again, I'm not my father. I don't think I've looked so forward to a new episode of Trek since DS9 finished. Bring it on. Live long on podcast, Daria in Australia. P.S. This may have already come up on the cast, I can't remember, but I've read that Discovery's Paul Stamets is named after an actual mycologist from our real world. Right. There's somebody who's into spores. Hmm, well, that makes sense, I guess. Yeah. yeah, cool. Pretty sure the real world spores don't transport you across the universe in jumps like this, but never mind. No, no, I'm fairly <laughs> sure of that too. But nice touch, though. Mm. Thank you, Daria. Oh, thank to hear you! From you. We've heard from Wayne, and it's... Ah! For a very long period of time, basically. Has he become um, Skullface McGinty? Possibly. (laughs) It's a plat dog reference. Uh, That's all, really. Oh, and Kelpian Stew. Ew. Oh, I'm glad to see that there's apparently more to Tyler Vock than just he's a Klingon, everybody. Wayne, I really did not see that coming, Peters. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you, Wayne. (laughs) Okay, and we have heard from the Llama God on this one. Lamagotlark, Scott Day, Okjake, Un, Vigatsiya. Well, what can I say? I mean, really, what can I say? There's, you know, so little happened in the episode that there's probably not a lot to talk about, so I mm, guess I'll find some way of filling the time. Uh, hmm, okay. So, before I get on to the obvious, first of all, that was an interesting episode. Despite the events at the end, providing most of the meat of this episode, it was structurally a little bit odd. Um, I definitely felt like some sort of time jump had happened between the previous episode and this one, mostly because the previous episode ends with the Rebels' planet being bombarded from orbit by a ship we never see, and then the Emperor appearing, and then suddenly Michael and Norco are on the shuttle back off to her palace. So, that's a bit of an odd one. We never saw what ship it was that bombarded the planet. I was expecting it to be the Defiant, given the role that the Defiant plays in shaping the Empire. Enterprise episode. But also, I could be wrong about this, but it seemed like the last episode ended with Stanitz basically being close to death, or brain dead, or something, and in this episode everyone's being quite chirpy about it, so it really felt like, from a couple of points of view, that something had been missed. That was quite interesting. Speaking of the Empress, Empress's Palace, it was a bit of a shame, again, to see that it wasn't the Defiant, or I, I'm assuming it wasn't also the ship that was bombarding the planet, otherwise Vernon and Lorcan would have had to go on to warp in a shuttle. But yeah, it's an interesting design, it definitely, I guess it definitely fit with the aesthetic of the Mirror Universe, it was not the best design I've ever seen although I like the kooky bit where it seems to have captured a star of power with this rate above or below the woman in Warburg in terms of having scientific believability I mean they had a black hole this is just a star of the power source you know, which is which is worse I, I really don't know but it was great to see in this episode that Stamets actually isn't dead and I was very pleasantly surprised that the expected conflict between himself and his mirror universe counterpart didn't actually happen so they had a nice chat is this a multi-dimensional constant that Stamets is just a really nice guy wherever he is even in the evil mirror universe I mean yeah we're told that he used this portal to advance himself, but nah, he still seemed like a nice guy, so I think it's probably all relative. So, yeah, yeah. Universal constant stance, that's great. Although, it does also turn out that Hugh is actually dead. And despite some rumours on the internet that he might be coming back, my guess was that we would actually end up with his consciousness being transferred inside Mirror Universe Hugh, and then he'd come back and they'd end up back together, or something really weird like that. But I don't think that's what's going to happen now. We also, and it's easy to overlook this, we also get a bit of a continuation of the Ash Bok plot from last week. It seems like the Ice Queen has now cured him of his madness. Um, it's kind of difficult to understand understand what's going on, really. She's obviously doing something with his mind, but is she removing Brock, or is she adding Ash, or is she doing what? And the fact that she's crying seems to suggest that maybe she's eliminated one of them completely, but yeah, this would be interesting to know. Or has she in fact accidentally created the first of the original series look Klingons, and is this why they all look slightly Mexican in the original series? Is this the origin that Wolf didn't want us to know about, and not what most people think the Bollocks Enterprise explanations? And apart from that, I can't really think of anything else to talk about, apart from that completely left build out of nowhere thing about Lorca. 
I said, I mean, that was, I don't think anyone saw that one coming. In a roundabout way, it's kind of like some of us predicted this recently, was wondering whether Lorca would actually find himself more at home in the mirror universe, and well, yeah, it seems he probably is, and there's a reason for that. It's because he is actually from there, oh no, Lorca is dead. And this really does explain an awful lot of things. It would have been nice for there to have been some setup to this, aside from the fact that is he just an asshole suffering from PTSD, you know, which explains why he all the fame and all the at night time. But I guess it's to their credit that the Bok Ash thing became a lot more obvious in the series was progressing, because that really took away any attention that Lorca might have been given and looking for any consistencies in his character. So, yeah, this is a really odd one, but it does subtly answer an awful lot of questions about him. Obviously, this is not where I was expecting the series to go, and suddenly, I don't know what to make of all the hints of his gentler side that we'd seen coming out in the later episodes in the first half of the season. So, yeah, I have absolutely no idea where this one's going to go now, and I'm just baffled to see what's actually going to happen next week. Is there anyone on the Discovery who doesn't have a secret alternate life? So this is becoming an increasingly bizarre series. Um... I, do I actually like this twist? I don't know. As I said, it's definitely explained some of Lorca's character and explained why he's so non staffly But at the same time, it seems to devalue some of the character development that he's had. We were discussing in the feedback to earlier episodes how this Starfleet wasn't like the Starfleet we know and love from the next generation. And what we were supposing was that, is that we were going to see the birth of the Federation as we knew it and see how people grew into embracing peace, exploration, not war, etc. Et et and having Lorca come from a completely different universe, I think, partially devalues that. Ultimately, at the end of the day, I think it depends where they're going to go with his character after that revelation, and maybe he will become rehabilitated in the normal universe. I don't know. Because it is very odd, because he did seem to be a character who underneath, he was someone who was decent, despite all the trauma he'd been through, and that seems to be undermined slightly now. But I guess we don't know that much, we only know from the Empress's point of view what it was Lorca did in the mirror universe, so maybe there's something more to come out from the watch with that one. So, yeah, this is not the episode that I was expecting to watch this week, so, yeah, who knows what the fuck's going to happen next week. So I look forward to that one eagerly, and I look forward to hearing what you guys made of this twist. So until we discover that Doug Bugger is actually a Klingon? Roy Clue and Lock Fast. Hey, sir. Thank you. I think there is a time jump. Not necessarily a big one, though, because you go from Georgia appearing to. Them she was being a hologram, in the wasn't she? She was you? a hologram. So so, they... And I don't think it was her ship that was pounding the planet because you get the impression that they're, they're travelling some distance in the shuttle to get to her. Yeah. It is a bit odd they haven't shown the ship that was doing that. It was completely invisible. Unless it's me. going to be something that is revealed. I suppose it could be explained later, yeah. Um, but no, I don't think it but was. There was I, I do remember from the last part, there was stuff about Tilly operating on Stamets with the spores, and that yeah. was somehow making progress. Yes. Perhaps not as much as they wanted at the time. And this one kind of opens with... Uh, with Doug Bugger, oh, the name's gone again. You know, he, he seems to be questioning whether she's making any progress, and she's saying, "Oh, you know, he looks a lot healthy and stuff." And it's like, "Oh, well, it's just you." Yes, which we're thinking, but then then he says, "Fix him," doesn't he? And, yeah, and, it's like... and it does kind of work as well. So, ish, sort of. Oh, I mean, this sports stuff really. Ugh. Yeah, but I mean, as in her Magic idea. Dust. <laughs> yeah. What well, basically, in the absence of anything else to try. Saru is saying, yeah, get, carry yeah, on get, trying, get, and it does eventually work. So Tilly was right. Yes. I, I'm glad Lama got slightly confused as well. As well. I, I don't feel quite on my own, because you seem to have a fairly good handle on things, but for me, it's it's like trying to, you know, sort of sort out very, very mixed up spaghetti. It's, yeah. Well, the thing about where we've seen the nicer side of Lorca, uh-huh. that's because, think of Burnham's log at the beginning of the last episode. Yeah, I could, oh, was the one before. I can't rest here. So, in other words, she's she was she's been made more bad, and he's been made more good by being in the right universe. Yes, our universe. Yes, oh, right. Okay, I kind of. But again, that's that's kind of really. It's the idea that the universe rubs rubs off on you, and also who you the people you are with rub off on you. The environment and the culture rub yeah. off on you. Yeah, maybe. Um, so that's where his gentle side, possibly. Would have been coming from, or perhaps he was being manipulative to ensure that they got in the mirror universe. To... But I think probably both. I think yeah. that in the same way as Burnham has had to do, has done some things, hasn't she, that she mm. regrets. But she hasn't completely changed her personality. But she's got a harder edge to her at the moment in this universe. Yeah. And so what I'm saying is that sometimes it would have been manipulation, but there would have been times when our universe would have rubbed off on him, and so we would have, mm. we would have seen that. I think. I, whether that you've now got the origin of the Mexican-looking Klingons with Clem Fandango. What? Oh, really? That's what he's suggesting. Oh, I, yeah, okay. I don't know. I, <laughs> it would be cool, in a way. Kind of, yes. <laughs> 
Ish? Ooh. <laughs> right. Hmm. Because he's kind of Klingon, but kind but of... But looks human. Yeah. yeah. And not only that, has got a bit of facial hair going... Right, oh, okay. I'm, I'm not sure, but it's kind <laughs> of a cool idea. Yeah. Still doesn't fit in with the pasty heads, but never mind. Um, yeah, but we don't talk about that. Yeah, we don't, do we? Mm. Yeah, yeah, okay. So, um, yeah, it wasn't what I was expecting either, I think it's fair. It wasn't what I was expecting. A nice point about them taking away attention from, you know, the Vox stuff, taking attention away from who Lorca was, and this suddenly, you know, turns on us. It's like, oh, yeah. Because, I mean, yeah, fair enough, there have been seeding stuff. You can't deny that. It doesn't come out of nowhere. But it's been quiet for a bit, hasn't it? Yeah, and it it does seem so hellishly convoluted. But, like you said, that might get explained later. I'm not expecting it all to be explained, but it would be nice to have more explanation than we currently have. Indeed. So there you are. Thank you to everybody who's fed back. Thank you. I have an interesting range of opinions. And uh, if you've got any thoughts you'd like to send us, do feel free to do so. The email will be read out at the end of this podcast. Uh, next, we will be looking at some Deep Space Nine, statistical probabilities, and the magnificent Ferengi. And then we'll be covering what's past his prologue next Monday. Discoverage 12. Yes. It's called Vaulting Ambition. Yes, apparently. Presumably that's some reference to Lorca's ambas- ambitions. Yeah, though it's not pole vaulting. No. No, sorry. You weren't really expecting it to be about pole vaulting, were you? No. Good, because <laughs> that wasn't very likely. No, sorry. Previously on Star Trek Discovery. We've got some feedback from uh, the Pie Man from our last Discovery episode. The wolf inside. Hi guys, Purry here to talk about Discovery Episode 11. Um, can't remember the name of the title. Um, yeah, this one was pretty good. Um, I think, I'm sorry, this feedback kind of recorded late, so it's been a five days and your podcast between it, but I thought I'd like to say a few things about it anyway. Um, yeah, so again, I, I'm quite enjoying this Mirror Universe arc. I think it's been uh, rather well presented. Um, and uh, it's good to see the idea that it's affecting them. Uh, so, you know, I mean, we have it, a lot of it's done through Burn, Burnham's point of view, and we have it through her eyes that she feels she's losing something because she's having to fit in here. Um, as I think uh, Lorca said in the last episode, like her life depends on it. This means 